everybody, Sticks here with the Token Minorities, bringing you another deck on Pokemon TCGO, and today I'm bringing you a deck that was just recently brought to my attention, and that is a Mew Toolbox deck. Basically, it's you have Mew from Fates Collide, and you can use attacks of all of your basic Pokemon. And before I get into the deck fully, just a reminder that if you like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, and maybe subscribe. It helps us out a lot and lets us do more for you guys. Also, if you have any suggestions or recommendations for decks that you'd like to see, please leave them in the description below, or well, in the comments section below, and I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. Now, like I said, this deck is centered around Mew from Fates Collide. You'll never be using Encounter. I mean, if you do, you're just kind of in a really bad situation, but you want to use the ability Memories of Dawn. This Pokemon can use attacks from any of your basic Pokemon in play. So naturally, we're just going to have a bunch of different basic Pokemon with a bunch of different attacks that you can use depending on the matchup, and you're going to use Mew to, ex to exploit them all. And I mean, Mew is just great because, I mean, you have Night March with basic Pokemon, you have like all types of different lock decks. I mean, this deck is going to be a Mew lock deck. I mean, it's Mew lock, Mew toolbox, whatever you want to call it. I kind of like toolbox just because that more applies to what this deck is. I mean, Mew lock can can also work just because every single one of these Pokemon that you are going to use has attacks that Mew can use to lock your opponent. But I prefer toolbox, but that's just my preference. I mean, obviously you can make use of your own. And let's just go ahead and get into the Pokemon. First off, we have a Shaman EX with setup. I mean, you really don't need to use Sky Return, but you definitely can with Mew if you want to. For one energy with a Dimension Valley, you can actually Sky Return. Uh, you're never going to use it, but it's just kind of a cool thing to point out. And then I'm skipping over these two guys just because I want to talk about all the things that Mew's going to take advantage of together. And you're using two Hoopa for the Scoundrel Ring just to get all of your EXs out. I mean, we're running... Uh, how many? Five different types of EXs in this deck. So you want to use Hoopa just to go ahead and grab them and bring them out so Mew can start using their attacks immediately. Now, on to the Pokemon that Mew is going to be using in order to lock your opponent. For starters, we have the Jolteon EX from Generations. And I mean, this card, there was so much hype about it coming out when it first came out. And I mean, it's kind of died down since, but this card still has a lot of use in a different de in different decks. I believe it's most useful in a Vespaquin Vileplume deck currently, although I'm not 100% sure about that. But it has the Flash Ray attack is what we're focusing on. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your basic Pokemon. So Mew can use that to just completely lock decks like night march big basics all of that so that is the first method of lock the second one we are using is jirachi stardust discard a special energy attached to your opponent's active pokemon if you do prevent all effects of attacks including damage done to this pokemon during your opponent's next turn so again uh what is that that's a jolteon and jirachi both help me with the night march matchup and just discarding special energy from your opponent and also locking their basic pokemon from being able to do much of anything at all uh, for a different matchup, you have the Glaceon, who has the Crystal Ray. 70 damage during your opponent's next turn. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from Evolution Pokemon. Now, I somewhat recently, I think it was like a month, maybe a month or two, uh, did a deck centered around Jolteon and Glaceon, and I said that Mew could be an excellent addition to this deck. Now, this, de this is basically a Mew deck with those two guys, but with also other options. So, I mean, Glaceon and Jolteon are a great combo in themselves, but with Mew, you can just throw in some more stuff and have even further combinations. Running one Regice for the Resistance Blizzard. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon EX. Another method of lock against EX Pokemon. And also, I mean, for a single water energy under a Dimension Valley, you can use Ice Beam and potentially get the Paralysis. Not very often you're going to use it, but I mean, it's just something that's kind of handy to have on occasion. And then, I mean, you're running a lock deck, so where would you be without Seismitoad EX? With the Quaking Punch attack, two energy, well, one energy and a Dimension Valley, you can use Quaking Punch to item lock your opponent. So going second, this deck actually does not mind going second a lot of times just because you can potentially get the Quaking Punch off turn one. Now, something worth noting, you can definitely add more Seismitoad. I mean, I would suggest maybe uh, replacing the energy switch with the Seismitoad if you wanted to. I just, I kind of like to focus on the Jolteon Glaceon combination and Seismitoad I use occasionally, but not often enough to where I'd want to run to, but if you use this deck, I would definitely recommend you try that out and make the decision for yourself. 
onto the items, running one energy switch, just because, I mean, energy switch plus max elixir is just a phenomenal combination. I believe I showed that off in the water toolbox deck video. I mean, that's just a great combination for getting, like, first turn flash rays or crystal rays off immediately or even a grenade hammer turn one is a possibility with energy switch and max elixir and mu and dimension valley and all that stuff uh one one of escape rope and switch i like running those i mean they give you different options for switching depending on your position in the match and it's just a little bit of versatility in a deck that is pretty much all about it. in fact i think the mu ex's uh, the Mew EX that this card is based off of had the ability Versatile, which, I mean, is about the definition of what that Mew is. We are also running four Max Elixir just to help speed up the process. We're only running the regular energies in this deck, so we don't have to worry about Zero Sick, don't have to worry about Enhanced Hammer and stuff like that. But at the same time, it does mean that this deck is occasionally a little slower, so Max Elixir just lets you get stuff out a lot faster and get you going and attacking. One Super Rod, just to get everything back, I mean, Super Rod, I, I like that. I prefer it over Sacred Ash, especially in this deck, because you're running energy that you can get back as well. Four Trainer's Mail, Trainer's Mail helps with consistency and is an amazing card in general. Four Ultra Ball to get everything out. Four VS Seeker to reuse all of our supporters. And then as for the supporters, we're kind of running a thinner line. Um, uh, running a one AZ, one Lysander, and then three three of N and Sycamore, actually. Now I would recommend running 2N and 4 Sycamore, but just for the time being, I decided to stick with that. And if I use this deck in the future, I'm probably going to change that. But I just kind of like that line because it was consistent for me. It was, I mean, it was reliable, although I do think that you should run 2-4 just because that's the number that I'm seeing in a lot of the more competitive and successful decks out there. 1AZ to pick up a Hoopa and a Shaman or something that gets... Lysandered out because you're going to be attacking with Mew. You're not really going to be attacking with those guys, so they are kind of Lysander bait. So having an AZ along with Switch and Escape Rope just gives you plenty of options to get those guys out of the active spot and attack with Mew. And one thing I forgot to mention about Mew, that free retreat. I mean, that is amazing. Like, it's free retreat. Like, you don't have to pay anything to retreat it, so you can just kind of send it out there if you don't know what you're doing, and then just retreat it if you have another plan on the bench or another plan develops during your turn. And also, Jolteon is a pretty great starter as well, just due to that free retreat. But anyway, on to the rest of the cards. We're running four Dimension Valley for Mew. I mean, if you have Mew with an electric energy and a water energy, just two energy, well, all of a sudden, and well, Granted, you have to have a Dimension Valley in play. All of a sudden, you can use Flash Ray, Stardust, Crystal Ray, Resistance Blizzard, Quaking Punch. Just have, by having those two energy in Dimension Valley, you have attacks from all five different Pokemon that you're running to be able to lock your opponent. And that versatility is just absolutely incredible and lets you have great matchups against so many different Pokemon and makes your opponent... Like, you can basically force what your opponent is going to do, which, I mean, I really kind of want to show in the in this match in this match coming up, and I hope that I will get to show based on whatever we face. Also running four, th four, three Fighting Fury Belt, I can't read, just to give Mew a little more longevity, and I mean, we're running all basic Pokemon. You might as well run Fighting Fury Belt just to give them more longevity and hit a little bit harder. And then four, seven of Electric and Water, you want to run more water just because you're running more water Pokemon anyway. And also more water allows you use of Grenade Hammer if you absolutely need to and Jolteon's the only one that uses electric energy so you want to have it available but you don't want to have it in overload you want to have more water energy than electric just because of the Pokemon you are running that being said I'm done rambling let's just go ahead and see this deck in action alrighty we have found one against oh boy this looks like a Vespaquin Vileplume deck so fingers crossed we get to go first which okay we do so we have a chance and I also want that means I want to get a Glaceon out to stop evolutions and stuff and you know what this this could be a worse start I mean I'm able to I mean I start with a Seismitoad which isn't the absolute best but I will be able to Ultra Ball for a Mew and then switch into it so I'm not in a bad position by any means so what I think I'm immediately just gonna do trainer's mail see what I can get Ugh, I start with super rad that's not what you want to start with, so I think I'm actually just going to get rid of that and the N to grab a Mew, and then I think, I actually think I'll be able to play my hand down completely. I, I grab the Mew instead of the Hoopa right now, just because I want to play the Switch. Well, actually, you know what? I don't know why I grabbed the Hoopa and the Mew. Um, I'm going to keep it just in case, just so I can see what else I can get. Well, there's the Glaceon. 
uh, get the energy onto the Mew, go for the Trainer's Mail, see what we can get. Uh, I don't want to grab the VS Seeker just because I'm going to be sycamoring, and then, all right, switch into my Mew. I don't think I will need the Regice because this also, because this now looks like a superior deck, and you know what? I actually think, do I want to play the Ultra Ball now? I think I do, just because I'm not going to be able to use it later. Um, yeah, let's get rid of a Lightning Energy, I think. Just because, I mean, I don't think I will need Jolteon at all. Get another Mew, just in case, like, my opponent plays something down, and then... Alright, I am just going to retreat into this Mew, that way the Mew with the energy is not in danger. I can just... If my opponent manages to paralyze this Mew, I can AZ it up with, well, my AZ. And then, well, I could have gone for the Crystal Ray, but looks like I don't get to because my opponent does counter it, and I'll only be able to Crystal Ray if I can get, like, a max elixir or a dimension valley or something like that so i mean overall i'm in a pretty decent position i think just because i have okay so if i get a never mind all right i thought i was going to be able to win just by getting like a dimension valley or something like that but nope my opponent was just playing in energy so that his shaman could set up for some more cards and i really hope my opponent doesn't uh manage to paralyze me because that'd be really annoying i want to az up the shaman so i can get some more cards but if i have to az up the mew to get an attack off then you got to do what you got to do but at this point i think i'm just going to try to item lock my opponent go for the quaking punch next turn with my mew just to slow my opponent down i mean he could paralyze me and that could potentially be bad for the um well, i mean obviously paralyzing me would be bad for trying to uh stop well for Trying to continue my lock. I cannot speak right now. And All right, my opponent looks like he's going to get an Ariados. Luckily, does not get the Roller Skates. So, actually, I actually think I'm in a pretty solid position. I mean, he's going to be able to poison my Mew, which will be annoying to say the least. But it's not the absolute end of the world. And did he... Why did he do that? I mean, he should have... I think my opponent had a error in order of operations. He should have poisonous, nest, poisonous nested with the Ariados in the active spot so that he wouldn't poison his shaman as well but now his shaman has some damage on it and i think yeah i'm just gonna power up the mew on the bench play the glaceon down just to get more cards off my shaman az that thing up play the shaman down hopefully get something else that i can work with like a dimension valley or something no i just draw into a buttload more energy that's actually kind of annoying i mean i run 11 energy in this deck which isn't that much but all right, what I'm going to do, just Quaking Punch and lock my opponent for the time being. I can even attach another energy next turn to be able to Grenade Hammer to get a knockout on the Shaman. Unfortunately, he has Float Stones on both those guys, so bringing any one of them into the active spot really isn't going to do much. And yeah, we just see that right there. And All right, looks like my opponent is just going to Poisonous Nest the Mew. And I think he's item locked right now, so I mean... I could do something kind of risky. I kind of want to, let's see, I want to Quaking Punch, but I also kind of want to Crystal Ray just to prevent any damage and also get a knockout. So what I think, I actually think that's what I'm gonna do. I, that could be a bad idea, but I'm gonna play the odds that my opponent doesn't have that much out of those four cards and to where I don't necessarily need to item lock. And if I can knock out the Shaman next turn, then you know what, that's, that's game, and I can just go from there. So I think, I think I'm in a great position for the time being. Uh, I mean, then again, that depends on what my opponent has. Okay, he has an Ultra Ball. Never mind. I was, that was stupid. I should have just simply went for the Quaking Punch on the Ariados to lock my opponent. Because I mean, then I could have just Quaking Punched again, knocked him out. Granted, me would have a little bit more damage on it, but I think that that would have been my best play. So, eh, screwed up a little bit. I mean, that's. That's another thing with this deck. I mean, you have to be, you have to be very careful with how, with with which lock you decide to go with, because if you go for the wrong one, then all of a sudden your opponent can start going for more. Well, your opponent can start going for more Pokemon and stuff like that, and potentially beat you. And oh boy, we're gonna see a. Okay, we don't see the Sleep Poison, so yeah, definitely should have gone for the Quaking Punch. That was my fault. And how do I keep drawing into so much energy? Good lord, can I get something else that would help, please? But what I think I'm going to do is just go ahead and put the Mew there. And then, um, you know what? I think Quaking Punch into Grenade Hammer next turn is my best play. Lock my opponent from items again. I mean, 
Unfortunately, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to, but I think I'm still in a pretty good position. I will be able to knock out the Sceptile next turn. Um, yeah, all right, I'll be able to knock it out with a Grenade Hammer and then just pray that my opponent doesn't have like a supporter in his hand or something. I even get, ooh, I get a, you know what? I think I'm gonna go for the VS Seeker. I mean, there's a lot of tempting options, but I think the VS Seeker just for sheer, uh, sheer, watch, sheer versatility is the way to go. And actually, I'm gonna hold on to my Sycamore. Um, my opponent has one card, so I have a chance to just, I mean, I have a chance to absolutely steamroll him at this point. Let's damage the Seismitone and Glaceon a little bit, don't really care. And okay, my opponent has one card. I just need, and I can even, you know what, next turn I can even escape rope into the Shaman. Yeah, I can escape rope, force my opponent into the Shaman, and then knock it out with a, of course my opponent draws an N. Of course he top decks an N. Oh, that's, that's annoying, but I mean, we're still like, we're already halfway to winning and we already have a good, good enough setup and <sighs> gotta love top decks, man. Gotta love top decks. But I mean, then again, I'm not in a horrible position. I still have one Mew set up ready to go. I have another Mew set up on the bench. I have a Sycamore in hand. So I'm not, not in a horrible position. What is kind of unfortunate is that my Super Rod is gone. And if I Sycamore, I'll be getting rid of my second Mew. So, well, getting rid of my third Mew. So I'll only have the two that I have on the field left to play with. But I think for the time being, I'm in a decent enough position where I don't think it will matter all that much. I mean, it definitely could later in the game, but I think at that point I can just attack with the Pokemon that will give, that'll shut down my opponent best. Because at that point, I think he'll have to, he'll have to reveal his strategy and what he's going to go with to try to win the game. And from that point on, I don't necessarily need Muse versatility. I just need the ability to attack with the certain lock attack. So I think, I think I'm still okay regardless. I mean, my opponent won't be able to damage me and he'll be able to... Okay, so I guess he didn't want to put two cards from his discard pile in his hand. That's really weird, but I am just going to go ahead and power up the Mew on the bench and Sycamore, get some more cards. I get a Dimension Valley. That is great. Um, hmm. Fighting Fury Belt onto the size of Toad just because and... I don't know. Do I, I kind of want to knock out this Verizian because it can knock out a Mew. So I think that's what I'm just going to go ahead and do. Look at all those attacks I can potentially use. And then I'm just going to grenade hammer damage the Glaceon and size. No, uh, I'll just damage the other Glaceon. Just just because, I mean, I don't really, I doubt I'll need them to attack. And I mean, I already have a Glaceon anyway. So right now I'm a Lysander away from winning. That's it. I just have to Lysander in my sh my opponent's Shaman next turn, and then the Mew on the bench can Quaking Punch for the win, and that will be just fine. I mean, granted, my opponent does have the N and uh, the Sceptile Spirit Link, so... Okay, that's where... Ah, darn it, I didn't know my opponent was running EXs, otherwise I would have kept my Reg Ice, because that would have just shut down Sceptile altogether, so... A little bit unfortunate, and I even... Oh, I even draw an N off my two. That's... Annoying, but I mean I again I'm still in such a great position that I don't think it matters. My opponent will be able to sleep poison me, which could be bad, but I think like as long as he just doesn't get extremely lucky, like flipping heads on the sleep poison, then flipping then me flipping tails on waking up, then I think I'm just fine. I mean, even a even an unseen claw at this point won't be able to knock me out just because my Mew has 90 HP. So I think I think I'm still in a good spot. I mean, granted, this is TCGO, and opponents getting lucky is not is not uncommon, but my opponent has a 25% chance of delaying this and really just putting me putting me in a spot where I have to work pretty hard to try to get something going. So still think I'm in a good spot. But okay, my opponent just Ultra Balls. Is he gonna go for a Shaman? Maybe? Um not sure. Okay, he's just going for Mega Sceptile. He can do that next turn, but I will have the Crystal Ray that will keep Mega Sceptile from being able to attack, so I think I'm still fine. I mean, granted, as long as my opponent doesn't get the heads and I don't get tails, so... I mean, that's the only way my opponent can even somewhat delay this game, because what I can even do is next turn go for the Crystal Ray with the Mew that's attacking, 
keep my opponent from being able to Mega Evolve and attack me, and then I can finish it off with a Grenade Hammer from my Mew on the bench and be and well, and win. So I am in a great position. So my opponent is. I think he's just gonna have to go for the Sleep Poison this turn and pray that he gets lucky enough to be able to draw the match out a little bit. Please no, of course. And oh wait, come on, give me heads, give me heads. Please don't, don't do this. <sighs> of course, of course, of course, because, because of course, why not? I mean, all of that. Um, I'm just gonna attach the energy to I think a Glaceon just to have another attacker ready to go. I should have attached to the other Glaceon, and I'm just ending my turn. I don't want to end my opponent to where he gets six cards. And, I mean, I have energy. I have stuff that's kind of ready to go. And, oh, that was, that sucked. That, that really sucked. So now my opponent actually has me in a kind of bad position because I only have a Mew ready to attack. And that Mew will just go down to a, um, will go down to an Unseen Claw, even an Unboosted. So just kind of in a kind of precarious situation right now. I think we're still in a position that we can win, but at the same time, this is kind of a bad situation as well. So yeah, the Unseen Claw will just go ahead and take the KO, and I'm in a little bit of a pickle right now, I think. Yeah, that's my best play. I think I'm just going to have to go for... Ooh, okay. I can... Let's see. I think I'm just going to try to power up the Glaceon... Okay, so I'm I'm in a okay position right now because I can power up the Glaceon, I think. Is that what I want to do? I think my best play is to retreat with Mew into the Glaceon, go for a Crystal Ray to keep my opponent from being able to evolve, and I'm just going to try to get a couple cards. Okay, all right, I'm in a, I'm in a good position because what I can do, play the Jolteon down so I don't draw that again off another N, go ahead and retreat into the Glaceon, keep my opponent from being able to play that Mega Sceptile if he wants to attack, and then I think I think I win next turn just because then I can manually retreat the Glaceon into my Mew, and then Lysander in that Shaman, and, or even just the Sceptile, and knock it out. So what I did by Crystal Rain right there is kept my opponent from being able to Mega Evolve, which is the only way he would be able to keep from getting knocked out next turn by a Grenade Hammer. I mean, really, I just put my opponent in a no-win situation because he could Mega Evolve and not be able to... Well, I guess he could Mega Evolve and avoid the KO next turn, or he could just simply uh, not evolve and try to attack this turn. So basically, if he Mega Evolved, he couldn't attack. If he didn't, I take the knockout next turn. So what I think my opponent's going to do is retreat into the Shaman, go for the Sky Return, and then promote the Spinarak. But I do have a Lysander in hand, so I have the game one regardless and my opponent's taken a little bit but i think he's trying to think out the best scenario for him to have a chance to win i mean this game ultimately didn't end up being that close i mean it still would end up being a five to two but it was a drawn out kind of annoying match just because well, i mean the luck but also the the fact that I was using a lock deck, I mean, lock decks just kind of are long in general. So I guess that's my fault a little bit. I apologize for quoting the luck as drawing out the game. But I mean, that drew it out by just like a couple turns. But right now, right here, I do have the win. Retreat my Glaceon into my Mew on the bench. Just Lysander in that Sceptile. Then go for the Grenade Hammer to end the game. And yeah, that'll be it. I'll just damage Jolteon Glaceon. Don't really care. Doesn't matter. I take the win. And yeah, that will be it. Huh, Mew was able to come through, and two Mews actually on their own were able to just completely steamroll my opponent's deck by just having a ton of different options to use. I mean, this is this is a really, really, really fun deck. I encourage you guys to all try it, and then even try different pokes running with it. Cause, I mean, Mew has the ability to use any basic Pokemon's attacks. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.